All right, guys. So <clears throat> let's make these uh, snowshoes. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So they're a little rounded. So the best thing is to start with cylinders. And let's see what that looks like. And I like to use a uh, 16 axis cylinder. It's easy to remove the poles. So we'll do that. Control D. Make another one. Put it here. And then Control D. Move it down. Put another one there, I think. Here. That's enough. All right. Those are like that. All right. So we don't need all of the, the whole cylinder. We just need sections of it. So I'm going to press F11. Go to. Uh, face selection mode select those faces here ones here we have that and I don't need that I just need this now we can uh, combine these combine so that's one object clear history clears everything out <clears throat> and here we can use extrude so I can uh, select these edges here like this click extrude hold V snap there select these edges here G to re-extrude again, hold V, snap there. So now we have this. And we just want to merge so that it, uh, it it's all connected. So here we have our basic snowshoe. I'm going to center the pivot and move it to the center. Move it down to the grid just so it's nice and centered. Freeze, reset just in case, and history again. There we go. Uh, now we can add some, well, let's uh, get the shape uh, a little better. So I'm going to add some loops in the center here, uh, two loops like that. I don't need the grid, it's actually just making it worse. Now the loops are here, press R to scale, scale these out, select uh, these vertices here and move them down, and then select uh, this edge and extrude, move it down this much. So we have, a, see these three faces like that, edges, G, and then move it down again. So G uh, lets you do this uh, a command that you previously did, the last command you did, without actually finding the tool again. So there it is, get rid of the grid here. That's our basic shape. And I need to just do this because I really want to get it right. So I'm going to adjust. That's better. All right, so uh, we need to add some uh, loops here. Uh, let's add one here, set it to equal. Uh, actually, we'll do relative, turn off autocomplete so that we can do it on triangles. <clears throat> like that, double click, shift, select, uh, that way it lets us add loops, like this, add edges to our loops, so we just selected all of these edges here, and now we can click and drag and drop it where we want, so like that, and hit enter, that drops it in, and from the top view we're just going to adjust this, so this comes up. So I'm holding shift, so uh, when I'm moving, if I hold shift and middle drag to the left or right, it's gonna lock it to the X direction. So now, I can, see even if I'm moving my mouse up, it's only moving left and right. So if I uh, shift and drag uh, down, it does the, uh, it locks it into the uh, Z direction, so I can only move it down. So it just makes it a little easier to move things. Okay, that's pretty good. And now we need to add a divider here. So we can do it relative, autocomplete could be on. And we'll add one like a loop here and a loop here. We can move it afterwards. We can also just go like that once we decide on it. Uh oh. Okay, so. I feel like these are too small, so we'll bring this in and bring this in. I think that's better. Like that. Yeah. And then we 
actually need to redo this a little bit. So I'm going to delete these faces and re-extrude this, this edge. So we're always adjusting. Yeah, I think that's better. Yep. Okay, so let's move, spread this out a little bit. Now we can uh, give it some depth. Select the, uh, the whole object, extrude, move it down. It's about it's about the right thickness. History. Okay, so let's bring the grid back. Uh, I want to make sure I'm centered, so I always do these checks. Uh, I'm going to move the pivot to the bottom of the shoe, like that. So I'm holding D, then I'm holding V as well. And then I'm just middle dragging to put it at the bottom of the shoe, then letting go of everything, then selecting the green arrow, and then holding holding V, then selecting the green arrow. And I don't know why it's, oh, holding X, sorry. V is to snap to vertex, we wanna hold X, and then middle drag after clicking the green arrow, and then it'll snap to the grid. And then we can modify, freeze, and reset, and history. Okay, that's pretty good. Now we need to select uh, faces here and here as well and extrude them down. We don't need what we just selected in the bottom. So holding control, he's selecting the bottom faces and I'm using four and five to switch between shaded and wireframe mode. Click extrude, press W so we only move in the one direction we want and just extrude this down. Okay. I'm gonna soften it just to see uh, that everything is okay. And it looks okay. And you can hold, you can press three to check your geometry. And if it, everything looks nice and smooth, that means uh, you're good. If you have any kind of hard edges, let's say you did this by accident, I just extruded and left it. You would see that when you're smoothing. So you can see, oh, there's an issue right there. All right, so now we need to extrude some more. So we'll select. So instead of me selecting all of these faces, uh, the easiest way to do to do this is select this face here and grow your selection by pressing Shift greater than, and see that's much quicker. Extrude up like that, and then the other thing is um, let's align this. It should be straight like that. Uh, the next thing is that we need to. Uh, we need to taper this down uh, but if you move the vertices like this it's hard to get the line straight so we're going to use a lattice so do this like that and then uh, hold the space bar go to create the formers and select lattice open the options up set divisions all the divisions to two set local divisions to 30 that's the default i always use just leave those and click apply so now we have our lattice here it's hard to see it but it's on it and if you move the lattice it moves the vertices that we have in the lattice and you can see also in the outliner there's the lattice yeah, just click on an empty space and right click and go to lattice point now you can select these lattice points here and move them down and you can see what it's doing is it's moving all the vertices the same uh, together so in line move that down to about there and if you clear history on the object the lattice disappears and everything is baked down everything is uh, the way it should be soften there we go now we need to add some loops, some edge loops, so that we can get uh, some beveling going on, because right now it's a little uh, soft. We wanna make sure some of our edges, that our edges are nice and uh, crisp. So we'll set this to equal, autocomplete on, and we'll just add oops, a loop, just some selection issues, a loop here, and then a loop here. And preview, you can see it's starting to look 
It's starting to look a little better. Uh, up here, we want to add relative because the, this, this edge is longer than this edge. So if we do equal distance, we'll have a bent uh, loop here. So we want to set it to relative. That way, it's nice and equal distance like that. And then we want to add one inside here. We'll do equal this time so that we get this and then one here. We want to also add one on the interior here and then one here as well. So let's do one here first. And then to add one on the inside here, we'll need to turn off autocomplete because it's not, if we don't have, if we have autocomplete on, see it only goes up to the triangle. So autocomplete off. And then we can shift select the triangles the edges on the triangles, double click, shift, double click, shift, double click, and shift. And hit enter. And then let's adjust, I think it needs to be longer. I'm always adjusting as I'm going. Now if you had a picture, you can uh, compare it to that and it'll be, it can be a lot more precise. Okay, now let's add some loops here. Autocomplete on. Like that. And now this, see how, uh, you get a weird thing going on here. That's because it's uh, subdividing from this edge all the way to that one. So you wanna just add a loop like that. And then it's nice and clean. Now we also need to remove these poles here, the triangles. I, I like to add a loop to do it. I'll show you. So let's add a loop. We'll set this to multi, set it to one and turn off autocomplete and do the same as we did before. Enter. Now if you uh, select the split poly tool, now to get to the special split poly tool, which is the old split poly tool, uh, hold shift, right click, split to the left, and then split to the right. And this brings back the old poly, uh, split poly tool. You can get into your shelf by just dra middle dragging it here into your shelf. And because this tool is awful, the new interactive split tool, I hate it. It doesn't see it doesn't even work most of the time. And uh, so you can just use this one. And you can tell them apart because it has a blurrier icon. <laughs> uh, so now we'll just go like this and just draw our edge loops this and I'll show you what it's doing once that's done uh, double click this guy this one and then select these two now you couldn't do this if you didn't have a 16 uh, axis uh, cylinder uh, you can also do it with a 24, 32, 64, 48, but not a 20 or a 50 or a 40. Actually, 40 maybe. And then uh, delete those edges, and you have that remaining. So you have, a, you have nice quads remaining, no poles. Now we want to do the same on the back. Uh, these edges here, it just, it's, just a, it's just a selection bug. They're not actually selected. And let's make sure nothing else is selected. Okay. 
Now, I also like to remove some of these uh, loops here because uh, they're not necessary. So if you just do this. And then delete those. So you get a nice cleaner, much nicer looking uh, topology. See, that looks nice and clean. Uh, we have a little more to do. Okay, we need loops here, so let's do it. Or complete on. So I'm going to add a loop here, but we also need one here, but you see there's not enough room here. So what we need to do is just move some of these down because we have room down there. So I'm going to select that and then double click this one. that down that should be enough and now we can add a loop here now what we can also do is select these loops now we want it to stay like that there but here we don't need that, so what we'll do is uh, we want to actually to be closer, so we'll just uh, spread them out there just to make the, loop, the edges crisper there. And then here we can also uh, make this a little nicer. So what we do is we'll do it this way. We'll add connections there. We don't need this guy. Then what we'll do is we'll go like that and like that. Make sure nothing else is selected. Delete those. And then we don't this loop. Uh, these loops we only need them to come up to about here because we just need to keep this edge. Afterwards, we don't need them. So we're just going to loop them together into each other. So if we double click this, set it to use snapping points along edge, set the snap tolerance to 80, we can put an uh, edge here, then one in the center here, here, and there, and then delete these two. And if we double click this one and this one, we can remove those. We don't need them. So you can see. Get a nice cleaner, uh, nice and clean transition here. Nice clean geo, and no extra edges or faces. So that's the basic snowshoe. Now, I just like to do an automatic map on it, just so that there are some UVs there right after I'm done. But I'm pretty happy with it. And there it is smooth. Okay. So in the next lesson, we'll do the foot.